हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर जितेन वशिष्ट फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ बायोटेक्नोलॉजी एंड बायोफॉर्मेटिक्स जे पी यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन टेक्नोलॉजी हिमाचल प्रदेश टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट मॉड्यूल दैट इज एक्टिव ट्रांसपोर्ट प्राइमरी एंड सेकेंडरी एक्टिव ट्रांसपोर्ट एंड मोलिक बेसिस ऑफ एक्वस चैनल दिस मॉड्यूल इज प्लेस्ड इन मेम membrane biophysics paper and in view of this following learning objectives are prepared for this module firstly the introduction and importance of active transport then different types of active transport then we will proceed towards structural function components of primary active transport simultaneously we'll go for structure and mechanisms of action of different co transport transporters for secondary transport and lastly we will talk about molecular structures of aquaporins for water transport across membrane as we all know that exchange of nutrient ions and molecules across the cell membrane is crucial for a living cell to survive the transport of these molecules is dependent upon membrane permeability mass charge and transmembrane concentration of the molecules in general any molecule or solute particle which can pass across the membrane down their concentration gradient by the virtue of passive or sometimes facilitated diffusion however in some instances a molecule may be required inside or outside the cell at higher amount and therefore for this a special kind of molecular transport is required which is generally termed as active transport this module deals with this active mode of transport which is required for the movement of molecules or ion against a concentration gradient that is from the lower concentration to the higher concentration in this module our main focus is to study how biological important ions like sodium ion potassium ion calcium ions are transported across membrane against their concentration gradient and how this process of transport get facilitation by different proteins of biological membrane with the help of atp generated energies thus in this section you will learn about the structural and functional characteristics of different molecular pumps and co transporters which are involved in the active transport of ions prime focus of this module is mainly on the active transport across the plasma membrane now coming to active transport of molecule across membrane why they are needed and what's their mechanism if you see living cells cannot exist under equilibrium condition at all the times and several molecules may be present unevenly at one side of plasma membrane for example the concentration of potassium ions inside the mammalian cell is approximately 100 millimolar while that of outside of the cell is only about 5 millimolar likewise you will find that sodium ions have a concentration of 150 millimolar and 10 to 20 millimolar at outside and inside of the cell respectively the same concentration variation may be found for calcium ions which shows the typical 10000 times less concentration than that outside the cell which means the cytosolic concentration is approximately 10 to the power of -7 molar so maintenance of such concentration gradients across plasma membrane cannot occur either by simple or facilitated diffusion rather molecules must move across cell membrane 
from their lower concentration region to an area of their higher concentration. And this uphill movement of molecules against their concentration gradient is sometimes known as active transport system. Active transport shows several similarities as well as dissimilarities with facilitated diffusion for molecular movement. Like facilitated diffusion, active transports occur due to selective binding of a solute with specific integral membrane proteins, which results a conformation changes in the protein structure and bind solute move across the membrane. However, unlike facilitated diffusion, endogonic movement of ions or solute across the membrane against a concentration gaze gradient is coupled to hexagonic processes like the hydrolysis of adenosine triphosphate or the absorbance of light or electron transport or the flow of both substance down their gradients. The glucose uptake by intestinal cells, sodium potassium pumps, that's generally called sodium potassium ATPase, proton potassium exchangers are several examples of active transports which generally occur in biological systems. The process of active transport necessitates energy which is in general comes from the hydrolysis of ATP. Active transport may be categorized into two general classes. Number one, the primary active transport and number two, the secondary active transport. An active transport which directly uses chemical energy of ATP, photons and electrochemical gradients to move molecules across a membrane against the gradients are generally termed as primary active transport. Another mechanism of active transport is independent of direct ATP coupling and it utilizes the electrochemical energy generated from pumping ions out of the cell. This kind of transport known as secondary active transport. Now, coming to a biochemical pumps of primary active transport. In primary active transport, movement of molecules or ions against their concentration gradient is achieved by direct ATP hydrolysis, which happens with the help of specific proteins having ATPase activity. These proteins are present in biological membranes and often termed as ATP powered biochemical pumps. The cytosolic phase of these proteins have ATP binding site and the breakdown of ATP is coupled with lowering of free energy delta G. This energy is then utilized for transportation of molecules across the membrane. This figure shows four different types of ATPase which are involved in active transport. Four different classes of ATPase powered transport proteins each of having its unique functioning in maintaining electrochemical gradients of iron. The four classes are basically the P class ATPase or pumps, F class pumps, V class pumps and lastly ABC super family ATPase. Among all these four classes of ATPs, P, V and F class of pump only transport ions, whereas ABC superfamily ATPs can transport ions as well as small molecules across the membrane. This figure shows the general structure of P class ATPs, which are present in the membrane. It shows two phases of towards exoplasmic phase and cytosolic phase. The P class ATPase consists of two subunits, alpha subunit 
and beta subunit which may be arranged in tetramer conformation that is that two alpha subunits are there and two beta subunits it means alpha 2 and beta 2 alpha subunit is a transmembrane catalytic subunit having atp binding site and this subunit is homologous among other pumps while beta subunit is a smaller subunit and has a regulatory function these p class pumps are regulated by phosphorylation of aspartic acid residues by atp during active transport both of these units become phosphorylated however the larger alpha subunits consist of major fraction of phosphorylated residues phosphorylation induces conformation changes which are critical to move cations across the membrane p class atpases are also known as e1 e2 atpases because of their ability to interconvert between two conformation of e1 and e2 the p class atpases are abundant among prokaryotic system archaebacteria as well as in eukaryotic system the most common example of p class atpases is sodium potassium atpases in plasma membrane which maintain the sodium and potassium concentration gradient required for resting potential of animal cell in this case movement of sodium takes place from inside with a concentration of 10 millimolar to outside which have is having the concentration of 145 millimolar simultaneously a similar gradient is being surpassed with potassium whose intracellular and extracellular concentrations are 140 millimolar and 5 millimolar respectively during active transport firstly three sodium ions bind to the carrier proteins associated with atp on the pump phosphorylation of aspartate present in cytoplasmic helices of pump protein takes place by hydrolysis of atp molecule which ultimately leads to change in pump conformation now cytoplasmic domain of pump has no more affinity for sodium ions and thus they are expelled out simultaneously two potassium ions bound to extracellular surface of pump causing dephosphorylation which results in releasing of potassium ions inside the cell now dephosphorylated carrier protein has now more affinity for sodium ions and the process again starts the fundamental role of this sodium potassium atpase is reflected in the energy invested in this single reaction about 25% of the total energy expenditure of a human at rest calcium intracellular signalings require a low concentration of approximately 0.1 to 0.2 micromolar maintenance of calcium ions between cytosol and the external medium or lumen of the sarcoplasmic reticulum of muscle cell is done with the help of calcium atpases which are also p class pumps another example of p class atpases is the proton potassium exchanger which is found in the stomach which is responsible for transport of protons out of and potassium ions into the cell these proton pumps are responsible for creating the acidic environment of the stomach and cause acid reflux proton pumps inhibitors are prescribed to the patient with ulcer or acid reflux to help reduce the acidity of their gut now coming towards a different kind of pump or atpases that's we call the v class atpases v class atpases are evolutionary highly conserved proteins with remarkably diverse function in eukaryotic system the function of v class pumps involved in maintaining low ph 
of vacuoles, lysosomes, endosomes, Golgi apparatus, and secretory vesicles in animal cells by ATP hydrolysis. These transporter proteins pump protons from cytosolic to the exoplasmic phase of the membrane against the proton electrochemical gradient. All known V class pump transport only protons in a process which does not involve any phosphoprotein intermediate. In general, majority of V class ATPases have two domains that is, an integral domain VO with the multiple subunits which act as a protein channel and a peripheral domain V1 having the ATP binding site and ATPase activity as seen in the figure. The binding and hydrolysis of ATP by B subunit in V1 domain provide energy for pumping of proton through the proton conducting channel formed by C and A subunits in VO domain. These pumps are not phosphorylated and dephosphorylated during proton transport. The mechanism of these pumps that coupled ATP hydrolysis to the uphill transport of protons is known completely in detail. F class pumps are primarily involved in energy conserving reactions of mitochondria, bacteria, and chloroplast. Because of their importance in ATP synthesis in chloroplast and mitochondria, F class proton pumps commonly called as ATP synthase. These F class pumps catalyze the transport of protons against their concentration gradient which is driven by ATP hydrolysis. The structure of a F class and V class pumps are similar to one another. The F class pumps have two domains, an integral membrane domain, this FO complex that provides a transmembrane pore for protons and the peripheral protein F1 uses the energy of ATP to derive protons against the concentration gradient. ABC superfamily ATPases. ABC means ATP binding cassettes. Superfamily ATPases are the class of ATP powered pump contain more and diverse member other than other classes. These pumps are present in organism ranging from bacteria to humans. However, each ABC protein is specific for a single substrate or group of related substrates and involved in transport of amino acids, peptides, proteins, metal ions, weighted lipids, bile salts and drugs out of cell against their concentration gradient. Permeases in the membrane of bacteria belong to ABC superfamily. Energy released by hydrolysis of ATP is used to transport of small molecules into the cell. This ABC transport family enables the cells to import nutrients from environment whereas the concentration of nutrients is low. These permeases are regulated by concentration of the nutrient in the medium and the metabolic needs of the cell. Hence, they are indiscible in nature. As you see in the figure, you will find that all members of ABC superfamily of transport proteins contain two transmembrane domain which form path for transport of molecules and determine the specificity of the substrate as well as two cytosolic ATP binding A domains that provides energy for the transport. In all the members of this superfamily are approximately 30 to 40 percent homologous for the sequences of A domains. In some ABC proteins, mostly in bacteria, the core domains are present in four separate polypeptides. In other, the core domains are fused into one 
or two multi-domain polypeptides. Okay, beside ATP power pumps, cells have a second discrete class of proteins that transport ions and small nutrients like glucose and amino acids against a concentration gradient. These are termed as co-transporters. A co-transporter uses the energy stored by an electrochemical gradient to power the uphill transport of small organic molecules or ion. For instance, the glucose can be uptake into cytosol against its concentration gradient when energetically favored movement of sodium ion, which is basically the co-transported ion, takes place into a cell across plasma membrane, driven both by its concentration gradient and by the transmembrane voltage gradient. An important feature of such co-transport is that ni neither molecule can move alone. Movement of both molecules together is obligatory or coupled. This kind of transport process is referred as secondary active transport. Co-transporters share several features with uniporters such as the glute proteins. These two different types of transporters have structural similarities and undergo cyclical conformation changes during transport. However, unipores can only accelerate thermodynamically favorable transport down a concentration gradient, that is, in passive transport, whereas co-transporters are utilized in active transport of molecules against their concentration gradient and utilize the energy of a coupled favorable reaction. As you can see in the figure, if the direction of movement of transported molecule and its co-transporter ion is same, the process is known as symport, whereas if transported molecule and its co-transporter ion moves in opposite direction, the process is known as anti-transport system. Symport carriers bind two dissimilar solutes and transport them together across a membrane. Symporters allows the movement of both ions in same direction, either inward or outward and transport of these solute is always obligatory coupled. A gradient of one substrate, usually an ion, may drive uphill, which is basically against the gradient transport of its co-substrate. Import of glucose and some amino acids in intestine is associated with the symport of sodium ion. Sodium gradient inside intestinal cells is established by sodium potassium ATPase of cell membrane. If you see in the figure, you will find that sodium glucose symporter in lining of small intestine and kidney tubules import glucose from the intestine lumen or urine against large concentration gradient. This symporter allows transport of two sodium ions along with one glucose molecule. Antiports carriers exchange one solute for another across a membrane. Usually, antiporters exhibit ping-pong kinetics. A substrate binds and it is transported. Then, another substrate binds and is transported in the other direction. Only exchange is catalyzed, not net transport. The carrier protein cannot undergo the conformational transition in the absence of bound substrate. For example, adenine nucleotide translocase, which we call ATP-ADP exchanger, is an antiporter which catalyzes 1 ratio 1 exchange of ADP for ATP across the inner mitochondrial membrane. The sodium-calcium exchanger act as antiporter 
and helps in maintaining intracellular low calcium concentration by exporting calcium ions. High extracellular concentration of sodium ions which is maintained by sodium potassium pump allows import of three sodium ions down its concentration gradient across the membrane with exchange of the one calcium ion. Although there are number of different mechanisms for efflux of calcium but still this exchanger plays important role as very fast transport of ions about 5000 calcium ions per second. Its regulation is based upon affinity. This exchanger have low affinity to calcium ions hence only effective at high concentration of calcium ions. Several co-transporters are charge specific and transports only cation or anions. For example, sodium proton antiporter exporter protons from cells coupled to the energetically favorable import of sodium ions which are positive in nature. Similarly, A1 anion antiporter protein catalyzes the exchange of chloride and carbonate ions across the plasma membrane. Aquaporins, also known as water channels, which are responsible for the transport of water and small polar molecules. They were first described or discovered by Peter Agri, who awarded Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 2003. Approximately 70% mass of most organisms is because of water and hence it is required to maintain a balance within living organism. Although water can diffuse across biological membranes, but this diffusion is not sufficient to reach all the physiological process of an organism. Aquaporins are present in a biological membrane and function as the plumbing system for cells to overcome the need of water for every physiological process. Water moves through cells in an organized way, most rapidly in tissues that have aquaporin water channels. For many years, scientists assumed that water leak through the cell membrane and some water does. However, this did not explain how water could move so quickly through some cells. Aquaporins selectively conduct water molecules in and out of the cell while preventing the passage of ions and other solutes. Also, these are also known as water channels Aquaporins are integral membrane pore proteins. Some of them, known as aquaclistroporins, also transport small uncharged dissolved molecules including ammonia, carbon dioxide, glycerol, and sometimes urea. As seen in the figure, the aquaporin water channel protein is composed of a bundle of six membrane spanning alpha helical domains. The N and C terminals of protein present inside of the cell and both terminal resembles to each other. They shows a repeating pattern of nucleotides. Between the helices there are five regions A to E that loop into or out of the cell membrane. Two of them are hydrophobic basically B and E with the, an asparagine proline alanine that we call a NPA motif pattern. They create a distinct hourglass shape making the water channel narrow in the middle and wider at the each end. Aquaporins form four part clusters in the cell membrane with each of the four monomers acting as a water channel.
X-ray profiles shows that aquaporins have two conical entrances. These hourglass shaped could be uh, the result of a natural selection process towards optimal permeability. It has been shown that conical entrance with a suitable opening angle can indeed provide a large increase of hydrodynamic channel permeability. So, students, let's now summarize what we have learned from in this module. Firstly, in active transport, a transport protein couples movement of a substrate against its concentration gradient to ATP hydrolysis. Secondly, two classes of transmembrane proteins mediate transport of ions, sugars, amino acids and other metabolites across the membrane which are basically ATP powered pumps and co-transporters. When you talk about ATP power pumps, four classes of transmembrane proteins couple the energy releasing hydrolysis of ATP with the energy requiring transport of substances against their concentration gradient. And these are P pumps, V pumps, and F class pumps, and lastly the ABC transporter proteins. The combined action of P class sodium and potassium ATPases in the plasma membrane and homologous calcium ATPase in the plasma membrane or cycloplasmic reticulum creates a usual ion milieu of animal cells which shows high potassium, low calcium and low sodium in the cytosol, low potassium, high calcium and high sodium in the extracellular fluid. In P-class pumps, phosphorylation of alpha subunit changes its conformation state, which are essential for coupling ATP hydrolysis to transport sodium, potassium, proton, or calcium ion. V and F-class ATPases, which transport protons exclusively, are large multi-subunit complexes with the proton conducting channels in the transmembrane domain and ATP binding sites in the cytosolic domain. The ABC superfamily includes bacterial permeases and about 50, million pro 50 mammalian proteins required for amino acid and sugar transport as well as expelled out the toxic substances from inside to outside of the cell. Lastly, in secondary active transport or co-transport, a transport protein couples movement of a substrate against its concentration gradient to the movement of a second substrate down its concentration gradient. The aquaporins are water channel proteins that specifically increase the permeability of cell membrane for water. That's complete. Thank you.